Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. And before we get into it, uh, yes, I know that the Chiefs have lost like eight games running at this point you do not need to remind me <laughs> so this is going to be another video in our series we've got going on the channel at the moment uh, around guru investors and top three tips that I've learned from all the great investors that I follow now uh, one of the most requested people from really the last two videos in the comment section has been Guy Spear the author of this book the education of a value investor and the manager of the Aqua Marine Fund, which is a common feature in our 13F uh, updates that we do every quarter on the channel. So I want to get into my top three tips from Guy Spear. Um, again, if you think I miss anything, please leave it in the comments down below and let me know other investors that you would like to see next as well. Uh, but for now, let's get straight into it. So firstly, a little bit of background for those that don't know Guy Spear. So Guy Spear uh, initially got uh, his name on the press quite a bit when he uh, joined up with Monish Pabrai and purchased a charity lunch with Warren Buffett for, I believe, something like 650,100 US dollars. So that is where uh, Guy Spear really first got his name uh, in a whole bunch of investing articles because people were looking at, you know, who are these guys that are purchasing a charity lunch with uh, the great Warren Buffett? And uh, he's not just, you know, uh, a guy that has had lunch with Buffett. He is actually a very successful investor. He's been running the Aqua Marine Fund, which started out originally with around $15 million of uh, largely family and friends sort of money. Um, uh, and he's grown that to the point both through uh, investment returns and through additional capital to the point where the Aqu Aquamarine Fund now um, is comfortably north of 100 million US dollars and has to file 13 Fs each quarter. And that's one of the reasons that Guy Spear is included in our 13 Fs as well. He is a value investor. He started out in sort of the investment banking industry in a business not too dissimilar to what you might see on the Wolf of Wall Street, um, had a massive change in his career discover the world of Ben Graham, Warren Buffett, value investing, and move towards starting his own investment firm. So that's a bit of background on Guy Spear. Uh, now let's get straight into the top three lessons that I have picked up from Guy uh, and that have influenced my investing. Now my first tip from Guy Spear and really the one that sets him apart in my books from uh, someone like Monish Pabrai who he talks to all the time and they bounce investment ideas back and forth from is the ability to hold on to businesses long term. Now the prime example in Guy Spear's portfolio today of this is a business called Ferrari. Now if you're unfamiliar with the story of uh, at least the investment side of the story of Ferrari, uh, Ferrari was originally part of the Fiat Chrysler business and this was a business that both Monish Pabrai and Guy Spear invested into quite heavily um, but they sort of took very different approaches approaches to that investment over time. So one of the things that uh, Fiat Chrysler did is they spun out the Ferrari business. They separated that into two different public companies. If you're a shareholder in Fiat Chrysler, you got given shares in the new Ferrari entity, which traded as a separate public company. Now, um, that business IPO'd at roughly, or spun out at roughly around 60 US dollars per share. Monish Pabrai was selling that all the way up uh, to around $100 a share. So he was getting out of Ferrari quite quickly quickly, was trading at a much higher multiple than Fiat Chrysler was, uh, but Guy Spear held on. Guy Spear recognized that this business was much higher quality than the overall Fiat Chrysler business. Um, Ferrari has massive margins because they uh, sell at such huge prices, huge premiums because of their brand and just great performance of the cars. Um, they are really uh, about the only recession proof car business I can think of because you're selling to such high end clients and you're producing such a small number of cars every single year. And it's just been an absolute money printing machine since it spun out from Fiat Chrysler back in 2015. And in terms of the performance, um, if you're following along at home, it's gone from about that 60 US dollars a share to about 180 US dollars a share over those five years. Um, and for those who can do that sort of compounding maths in their head, that comes out at about 27% per year compounded plus dividends. Ferrari has started paying a little bit of dividend money as well. Uh, and it's been a spectacular return and it's really just been achieved by um, recognizing that Ferrari is a phenomenal business and it's much more resilient and deserves a much higher valuation than something like a Fiat Chrysler or one of the more traditional automakers. 
And Guy Spear just sat back and let the great business compounding do its thing. So that is really the first superpower I see with, with Guy Spear. And the thing that absolutely sets him apart from many other investors is the ability to hold on to great businesses and let them just do their thing. Now tip number two that I've gotten from Guy Spear over time is not to compound your mistakes. And the key lesson or the key example that Guy Spear often uses here is some of the big tech companies. Now uh, Guy Spear will openly go out and tell you, uh, and he's written about this in some of his annual reports, that he missed some of the big tech names uh, as they were sort of coming up. So um, just like Warren Buffett, he really missed Google. He didn't ever invest in Facebook or Amazon or anything like that. Um, and it just took him far too long to recognize that these are great businesses now um, that is a mistake and those mistakes happen that's part of that's par for the course in value investing is you don't see all these great businesses coming up and you can certainly miss them um, but one of the things that Guy Spear spoke a lot about and I believe it was probably around his 2017 or 2018 report somewhere around there um, is not to double up on that same mistake so if we look at a business like Amazon now, um, it's growing at a phenomenal rate. It's still growing like an absolute weed, even though it is enormous in size. Um, but I wanna put up some basic stats here on just the valuation that this business is trading for. And one of the things that we've spoken about in recent videos, this idea of a business having to return cash to you over time in order to justify a purchase price. And the price that you pay for a business, if you pay those really high multiples, or really high multiples of the current earnings or free cash flows or book value or whatever metric you wanna look at, um, the higher multiple you pay, the higher the bar in terms of cash that that business has to return to you. And one of the things that Guy Spear um, talked about in relation to some of these tech com companies that are trading at really high multiples is he says that it's important to recognize that, okay, I've missed them. Uh, I didn't see, you know, Amazon in 2010 or 2005 or anything, and, and I didn't jump in, into that investment at, at scale. I've missed it, it was a mistake. And what I don't want to do is make that mistake even worse by overpaying for Amazon when it's trading at 80 times earnings or whatever it is. And having something go wrong with Amazon over the next few years and turning what is currently a mistake of omission, in other words, he just missed it, into a, into a mistake of omission that you try to correct and it turns into a mistake of overpaying for a business that might not perform um, as well as you may have hoped or sort of has to do like 20 or 30% a year growth in order for that price to make sense. So don't compound your mistakes by overpaying for things that you may have missed. Um, move on, you don't have to own every business to do well in uh, the investing game and uh, that's something that is very important to recognize. And the third and final tip that I have from Guy Spear is to avoid something that he calls cocaine brain. And um, I can't say I've had firsthand experience with this, but um, you know, Guy Spear basically talks through um, this idea of cocaine brain and basically being intoxicated by the idea of a new investment uh, coming across and you know, you thinking that you can make a lot of money in that and basically investing in it um, before you've done all the work and before you've even checked off some of the basic things that you want to look for to ensure that this isn't going to turn into a mistake that causes a permanent loss of capital and causes you to break Warren Buffett's rule number one, don't lose money, and rule number two, don't forget rule number one. So um, it's important to avoid cocaine brain and that is achieved through something called an investment checklist. Now, um, Guy Spear often talks about uh, the book by Atul Gawande, I believe it's called The Checklist Manifest. It's a book I still need to read. I haven't got to it yet. Um, but basically, a talker one day is a surgeon and talks through the importance of having checklists for minimizing mistakes uh, in several fields. And actually, uh, I believe he uses Guy Spear as an example in his book uh, in the investing investing world, but he's talking about surgeries, he's talking about investing, he's talking about flying a plane, all sorts of things where you need to have a checklist in order to make sure that you don't make mistakes. And one of the things Guy Spear talks about in terms of checklists is building your own. So um, both Guy Spear and Monish Prabhai and someone like Phil Town and Danielle Town, they all have investment checklists. Um, and they're all different. So um, we need to customize our own checklist to recognize our own biases and the, our own sort of errors and traps that we tend to fall into. 
So it's important to build your own checklist and they need to be designed in a way where um, each of the points are not so obvious that it takes you an extremely long time to get through, um, but the points are also not so broad that you miss something as well. So for example, if a pilot was building a checklist on all the things they need to know, um, when landing a plane, the checklist wouldn't be so simple that it says land the plane without crashing and it wouldn't be so detailed um, that it has, you know, turn turn the turn the controls slightly left and slightly right and push this button and that button and that button. Um, it's probably somewhere in the middle where it says, uh, you know, maybe it says something like deploy the, you know, landing tire, landing gear, put down the wheels. Um, and you they know in their head what that process looks like, um, but they really just need that that basic checkpoint to that's somewhere in the middle between way too simple and way too complex that's kind of a nice balance to make sure that you get um, all the things checked off and it doesn't take you five times longer than it should because you've got you know way too much detail in there. So that's the final lesson from Guy Spear is to have an investment checklist, avoid cocaine brain and build that checklist for yourself. It's certainly fine to reference other people uh, and other people's checklists to get a bit of inspiration. A useful exercise I went through uh, after hearing from Maj Prabhai on this topic was to go through and actually analyze other investors mistakes because typically that's cheaper than making the mistakes yourself <laughs> um, and trying to build a checklist around that as well so you know looking at what caused uh, particular investments say something like horsehead holdings for um for Monas Probio and Guy Spear to go south um that largely was excessive debt and um let's say dishonest management for lack of a better term um, and you know just trying to identify these things that that other investors have made mistakes with as well as yourself uh, it can really be much much cheaper to have other investors make the mistakes for you and learn from that uh, than to make them yourself even though they might uh, sink into your brain a bit more if you make them yourself so those are my top three lessons from Guy, Guy Spear I do hope you really enjoyed the video uh, if you did please hit like and hit subscribe on the channel if you haven't done so already also really keen to hear who you would like to see next time in this Guru Investor series. So let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but that's all for me today. So you can watch some old videos over there if you would like. Uh, hit subscribe over there if you haven't already. I appreciate all the support that uh, everyone on the channel is always giving me. It's great and I really enjoy making these videos. So I appreciate that a lot. Uh, but that's all for me today. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.